are here. We are live from the Penny Pit. We are in our lovely kitchen. We're just going to give everybody five minutes to get logged on and then we'll get started. So just make sure you've got all your ingredients ready, you've got your equipment ready. Um, if everyone can also preheat their oven to 200 degrees centigrade, that's a... Uh, 180 Fahrenheit, what's that in gas mark? Seven? Nice. Gas mark seven? Six. Okay, first of all, we'll just go through the ingredients. So if you have two cups of flour, the cup that I use is this size. It's just a kid's cup, so I put two of these in a mixing bowl. Um, I've also got a little bit of spare flour. You might need that if you add a little too much water, but you'll also need it whenever you're rolling out uh, your pizza. You need some oil. I'm using olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. You'll need some water, um, whatever pizza toppings you're using. So I've got sweet corn, mushrooms, an onion, and the pepper. And then I've got my cheeses as well. For the pizza dough, you'll also need some bacon powder. You'll need some salt and some mixed herbs. So I'll just make sure everybody's ready. Equipment wise as well, I've got a smaller bowl, that's for mixing up my tomato base. I've got a pizza dish, um, I've lightly oiled this because sometimes the pizza can stick to it. Um, or you can use some bacon paper if you have it. If you don't have a pizza dish like this, you can use a wire rack, but you'll need to put something over the wire rack so that the pizza doesn't pull through. Um, I've got a grater, a rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can use some kind of bottle. Sometimes I like to use a wine bottle. Um, I've got a sharp knife, uh, a wooden spoon, I've got a teaspoon and a tablespoon and a chopping board. So hopefully everybody's ready. I'm just going to do a little introduction in case anybody doesn't know me. So my name's Carrie. I'm a nutritionist at the Penny Pit. Um, the main part of my job is teaching people how to eat more healthily. Um, so before COVID, I would go into the schools and teach children about healthy eating using the Eat Well Guide. Um, during COVID, I've done some online cooking classes, which you know some of the people on here today have joined in with. Um, we enjoyed it so much, that's why we decided to do the Cook Along Live. I know a lot of people are a bit demented, stuck in the house, not knowing what to do. So. We started with this recipe because it's a great recipe to do with the kids and even adults and it's really yummy. I've also got my volunteer Derek, he's my sous chef for today. Um, he says that I will keep him right but I think he'll also keep me right so thank you Derek for coming. You're welcome. Um, Derek's been volunteering with us for the whole of lockdown. Yes I was involved in the first lockdown doing deliveries to those that were shielding and pressing fans and can I just say it's an honour to be here this afternoon and thank you very much for inviting me down to be your guinea pig Gary. <laughs> You're very um, welcome. It's a pleasure. The work you do down here is just phenomenal and unbelievable. I'm so proud to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we'll just get started guys. Uh, so I've just measured out my flour. Next thing I'm going to do is add probably about half a teaspoon of the bacon powder. The bacon powder is your rising agent. Me personally, I like my pizzas quite thin and crispy, so I don't like to put too much of this in. If you like them a wee bit thicker, I would say put a little bit more in, but it is quite powerful, so you don't need that much. So I'll probably put about half a teaspoon in. Next thing I'm going to put in is half a teaspoon of salt. Or sorry, a teaspoon of salt. It would just be quite bland. At the Penny Pit we try not and use things like salt or sugar in any of our recipes, but sometimes we do need it. Finally, we need some oil. This will give your dough a nice silky, soft feeling. So we're going to put one tablespoon of this in. Tablespoon is the, the spoon that you eat your breakfast with. And then we're going to go with the water. One thing I need to say to you is go easy on the water. You can always add more, but you can't take away. 
Um, so if you just add it a little at a time, we've just got a good amount of cold water. We're just going to dribble in each time and stir it at the same time. So I just like to put a little bit in, stir it. Don't panic if you do add too much water. We have given out extra flour. So if you add too much water, add a little bit more flour. If you add too much flour, add a little bit more water. So the dough will start to come together a little bit. It'll start to sort of clump. It'll get to a point where the spoon doesn't really work anymore and you'll actually need to just get your hands in there. This is great for the kids because it means they're stuck to the one spot and they can't move for five minutes. Okay, we've got a question asking how much flour and how much water are you using? So I've used two cups of flour. The water, I would say probably no more than 80 milliliters, but it really depends. And what kind of flour are you using? I have plain flour, but you can use um, bread flour. Um, your dough might come out a bit thicker. So if you want it a bit thinner, then you'll need to add, um, or you'll need to roll out a little bit more. I think plain flours, well, I know we're also in a flour shortage. So my dough is sort of starting to come together. What you're looking for is for the bowl to be completely clean. Derek. Terrible. Terrible. Okay, Derek, I think you might need a little bit more flour. flour in there, yes. So Derek's is just a little bit sticky. So he's gonna add a little bit more flour and keep working it. So I'm actually gonna add a tiny bit more water. It's sometimes with making pizzas, it is about trial and error, but it's also quite fun to do it. I'm a pizza lover and I love making homemade pizzas because I think they're so easy once you get the hang of it. Plus they taste a lot better once you get them right and you can put whatever toppings you want on it. This is fun. <laughs> You're getting extra bits in there. So you want to keep working the flour so that it all becomes combined. It's probably, if it's all sticking to your hands and like stringy and stuff, then try adding a wee bit more flour and seeing how it goes. Towards the end of it, it should be quite soft, feel quite soft. The good thing about this dough as well is there's no yeast in it. That means there's no rising agent, so we don't need to make it and leave it for a while for it to rise. So if you can't think of anything that you want for dinner, then you can just make this and use it straight away. One thing I have learned about it, but is that if you leave it for 10 minutes to let the dough rest, it makes it easier to roll out as well. So that's why we're doing that first. So this is what I have. My bowl's pretty much clean. I've got my dough. Do you need more flour? Just a touch more flour. Oh, I think we've got some help here. That's gotten free. That's gotten free flour. Oh, it's shops in the So if your dough's looking like mine and it's all shape, I'm just going to lightly flour the surface that I'm using. Just make sure you've cleaned and sanitized your surface beforehand and just pop it on there. We don't need to work the flour too much, um, but the more you work it, the smoother it'll become and you'll just make sure that everything's combined. I think we're getting there, Kenny. That's it. That looks good. Does it feel soft? Yes. That's, you maybe just need to work it a bit more. Yeah, I need to work it a bit more. Just 
tally as I spin? Does it need to be completely smooth or can it have some cracks in? And the more you work it, the more the cracks should go away. Also with letting it rest. I'll show you what mine's like whenever I've worked it a bit. Um, so we've used two cups of flour. This will either make one big pizza um, or it'll make two smaller ones for kids. So you probably need to do this for about three or four minutes. You're pretty much just uh, kneading it with the heel of your hand and pulling the dough back and putting it on top. So just do that, sort of like pulling it over, it just means everything's combined. Just doing this for three or four minutes. We're getting there, I think. Good. It can be quite tricky the first time you've ever made pizza. I also find that and my kitchen was an absolute mess afterwards because there was just far everywhere. Okay, so... Can I just add, this is the first time I've actually made a pizza base myself. <laughs> I feel like this is the first time I've made one as well. No, you're doing well. Yours probably looks better than mine. So I'm just going to put mine into the bowl. So mine still has a few cracks on it. Um, you can see it. I've just sort of put it into a bowl. I'm going to let it rest now for 10 minutes while we make everything else. I'm just going to wash my hands as well. Let everybody catch up. Ready to go into the bowl. It's not done. Do you want to show your the camera there? Uh, perhaps, yes, here we go. I'll pass on the way to wash my hands. There we are. Can you see that? Lovely. Yeah, Lovely, jubbly. to make is our tomato sauce for our pizza base. I'll just wait for Derek to wash his hands. Today we're using chopped tomatoes. Um, I know that all of our recipe packs that went out are have got chopped tomatoes as well but you can use passata um, if you don't want to use chopped tomatoes. You can also use tomato puree. Sometimes I feel like tomato puree is a little bit concentrated, so you could possibly add a little bit of water just to loosen it off a bit as well. Um, the thing about chopped tomatoes is they do come lumpy. Some children might not like this, or adults, which is absolutely fine. If you have a hand blender, you can blend it. Um, or you can use a fork and try and mash it up. But I'm just going to keep mine whole because I like the of it. So if you just put your chopped tomatoes into a bowl. Be careful when you're opening, of course. Be careful when you're opening your hands. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of mixed herbs, which everyone should have got in their pack, and then give it a good stir. And um, the thing about this uh, tomato base as well, you'll probably notice is we didn't add any salt, which makes it a good bit healthier for us. The Scottish population, unfortunately, has a lot of salt added to their diet. Um, 
Other things you can add to this, we like to add other herbs and spices. I really like to add paprika, and um, it just gives a really nice flavor. Also, sometimes I like a little kick to my food, so I'll add some chili powder. You can also chop up a garlic clove and add that, um, or some onion powder, just whatever herbs and spices you can think of, but they're the ones that I feel work the best. So we'll just put that to the side. Um, we're just going to do some chopping skills now. So I'll give you a few tips and tricks on how to chop. So just make sure everything's washed really well before you use it. Um, just run it under the tap for the cold tap for a couple of minutes and just wipe in the skin. So I'm going to start with the pepper. The aim whenever you're chopping something is always to be chopping on a flat surface. So I'm just going to put the pepper on its side and cut the bottom off. It means I've got a flat surface, the pepper's not rolling all about the, the place and um, it reduces the risk of me cutting myself. Uh, you'll notice that peppers have little segments, so what I like to do is cut it per segment. So just using a sharp knife going down the way. Everybody will have their own way of doing this, but this is just the way I find easier. Um, I notice with cook the cooking sessions that I've done a lot, there's always quite a lot of waste when it comes to peppers. So I don't know if you can see it, I've used pretty much the whole of the pepper. Um, try not to eat the seeds. Too many of them aren't very good for you. Uh, you can dice this whatever way you want. I'm going to do it into slices. What are you going to do? I'm going to slice. You're slicing as well. One tip for everybody, a good tip, is probably what we're going to tell them. When you're chopping anything that's got a film on the outside, put the skin side down. No, you don't. You put the, the side other side down, down so that it doesn't move. And crush it. And crush it and then slice. There we go. There's your tip of the day. Put it skin side down if you sit in here and crush it lightly with your hand. It just means it doesn't roll bite. And then thinly slice. Whenever I'm making pizza, I always like to cut everything quite thin, just because it makes it easier to cook in the oven. You can use any colour of pepper for this. Um, I wanted to use red because it's my favourite. Sometimes I can find the green ones to be quite bitter. You also don't need to put pepper on your pizza. It's entirely up to you. So just put it in the little bowl whenever you're finished. That was very quick there. <laughs> lagging behind. And the next thing we'll probably do is the onion. So you'll need to take the skin off the onion. The easiest way I find to do this is just taking the top bit off. So not the root, not the bit with the little frilly bits at the end, the top bit. So taking the top bit off and you've got a flat surface again. So it means the onion isn't rolling about and going straight down the middle. As we all know, like Donkey said in Shrek, onions have a lot of layers. Was it Donkey or Shrek? Uh, so you want to take the top layer off so you're left with a smooth surface. If you suffer a lot from strong onions and they make you cry, my granny always says put a metal teaspoon in your mouth and that will stop it. Although I've heard lots of other suggestions. A metal teaspoon in your mouth? Yeah, so you just suck on the metal teaspoon. I'm going to slice mine into rings. I don't know, I'm dicing mine. Derek's dicing his, so you'll see his good chopping skills. I'm doing mine into rings, you can dice it. Um, just whatever your preference is. If you feel like, and you're doing the rings, if you feel that the knife's getting too close, and your onions like this, just turn it off the way. We're not a master chef, so everything doesn't need to be incredibly accurate. I'm 
enjoying this. Good fun, Carrie. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying that. Can somebody get me a wee bowl, please? For and Derek. Oh, you just do your scale. For the onions. Okay, next I'm going to do mushrooms. I've got these lovely chestnut mushrooms. Oh, I don't really like them. I'm just going to take the stock off. Thank you. We've got a few people being a little more creative, so Anthony Baby is doing a gluten free pizza. Oh wow, oh, nice. well done. Um, we've got some people changing up their, um, their veggies on it. At the end, if everybody takes some photos, we it's really good feedback for us. We can look through them and see all the inspiration that everybody's doing. So I'm just going to do two mushrooms because they're quite well. Final thing we're going to do is grate some cheese. I know a lot of people have grated cheese before, but I think it's good to get every aspect. So feel free to use whatever grating method you want. I'm just going to use a thicker one. We've also given in the recipe packs mozzarella. You don't need to grate mozzarella because it's quite a soft cheese. You mostly tear it. You can chop it if you want, but because it's so soft. And watch your fingers as well whenever you're doing that. Okay, just tear my mozzarella while I'm here as well. In quite small pieces. I like to use parmesan sometimes because it's got a little bit more flavour. Very expensive parmesan. It is. Sometimes you need to treat yourself there. <laughs> <laughs> so just shred in the parmesan into little bits. Voila. Perfect. And that's all our ingredients prepped. Easy as that. I'm just gonna clean my station a little bit and wash my hands so that it makes it easier to roll out the pizza dough. Yeah. So for rolling out the pizza dough, you'll obviously need a rolling pin or some kind of bottle. Just make sure you clean them beforehand. Or you really need to, which I would see now. Okay. Um, if you really need to, you can just use your hand. realize that if you're watching from a laptop or a computer, me and Derek are sort of standing on the roof. Um, if you're watching on a, on a phone, we look normal, but apologies for that. By next week, we might have worked out how to fix it, but we'll wait and see. And a clean station is a healthy station. I agree. I find it makes it cooking a lot less stressful if you have a clear station and you know where everything is. And uh, this makes it a lot easier. Okay, so we'll just roll out the pizza dough. Derek, I don't know what if you want to attempt throwing it up in the air. No. <laughs> so what you need to do is just get a little bit more flour, sprinkle your surface with it. 
Also, your rolling pin or whatever you're using, you don't want it sticking to that. Just gonna smear it out a little bit, smear your rolling pin, and get your nice dough ball. What I like doing first with pizza, because they're homemade, they don't need to be uniformly round. But having it in a ball like this makes it a lot easier to roll out. I just bash it on the surface, sort of press it down as much as I can with my hand first. So you have a nice round shape. And then go in with the rolling pin. Whenever you're rolling with a rolling pin, try and do it in one direction. So always move the dough, not the rolling pin. So rather than going like this and twisting, just turn the dough. This will make sure it stays a nice round shape. Because we've rested it, if you notice that your dough, once you roll out a bit, it springs back, you might want to rest it a little bit more. That's just the gluten in the flour. So like I said earlier, I like my pizzas nice and thin. So I'm gonna roll mine out to the size of my pizza dish so that it's nice and thin. Why are you so quick? <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I'll do mine slightly thicker then. Okay. Let's see if we can see a difference between the two, yeah? Yep. Are you going to go into a creative shape? Maybe a love heart? <laughs> or your beloved with Valentine's Day coming up shortly? Give it to Olive in a heart shaped. Would she appreciate that? I'm stuck for words here. <laughs> <laughs> no. So Derek's is probably, I would say, a centimetre, I think? Half a centimetre? Yeah, half a centimetre. I'm trying to get mine a bit less, because I do like it. And then, just bring your hand close. I'm going to dust off the flour a little bit from the bottom. This is to try and make you look professional. And throw it up in the air. And then just lay it over your pan. Spread it out. Okay, so this is my dough. That's Derek's. Oh, Derek's got a crust in his dough. I'm going crustless. That looks good. You can make some indentations if you so wish. We're getting really professional here. So this is my pizza. So just put your toppings on now. Starting with your tomato base. Just spinning it on. You can put it on as thick or thin as you like. I like quite a bit of tomato, so I'm going to put it on quite thick. One thing I would say whenever you're making the base and you roll it out is not to let it sit for a long time with the toppings on it because then it can end up going soggy if you want a nice crispy pizza. One thing we haven't put in here, which is I always think is quite nice, is some black pepper. You can put black pepper in it as well. Sometimes I like to crack black pepper over it once I've cooked it as well. But you're the boss. <laughs> it's your pizza. Just try to make sure you put all the sauce to the edges because you don't want bits without the sauce. And then I'm going to start with my mushrooms, just placing them over.
What's your favourite pizza topping, Derek? To be perfectly honest, I just like mozzarella. Oh, margarita? <laughs> yeah. Mm, mine too. Although I do like a good pepperoni. Pepperoni, well, yes. So I just placed my mushrooms evenly over the base. I'm gonna go with the pepper. I'll do onions first. Excellent. And then a bit of a mixture. If you feel that you have no more pizza left, but you've still got a lot of maybe peppers, onions, you've got your tomato sauce, you could fry off the onions along with a little bit of garlic if you have it. Um, add the peppers and add your tomato sauce mixture and then you've got a perfect pasta sauce. Just boil up some pasta and add it to that. Maybe add a little bit of cheese. That's an idea. I'm still on my onion. Okay. Are you going to go with some sweet corn? or? No, I'm, I'm not a sweet corn lover on pizzas. That's okay. I think I'll get sweet corn on this. Are you going to cheese it? And then I'm going to cheese it and then we can maybe have a look at the difference with the sweet corn and not the sweet corn. Yeah, of course. So I'm just adding my onion, just putting it all evenly over. So Terry, we've got a question asking, how, if we've not got a pizza tray, what else can we use? So you can use the racks in the oven. Yeah. Just make sure you put something below it so I would recommend baking paper, otherwise the dough will start to fall through the gaps. Um, I personally haven't used tin foil before, but it could possibly work. We don't have a pizza tray, this is just a round shaped baking tray. You can use that as well, but you'll obviously get square shapes as well. Parchment paper is another one you can use instead of baking paper, but yep. parchment paper is, is quite good for pizzas and to, it's straight into the oven. Yep. Parchment paper then. Um, anything else? Don't forget, pizzas don't have to be round. They can be whatever shape. So don't feel that your pan needs to be round. You can make it square as well. I just put my sweet corn on. And now I'm going to do the cheese. I like to do like quite a light sprinkling of cheese. Because sometimes I feel if you have quite a lot of toppings then they don't end up getting cooked, but it's entirely up to you. Finish mine off with a little herbs on top, mix herbs. Delicious. I'm not sure if they're Italian mixed or French mixed or... I think they are Italian mixed, seeing it's pizza week. I'd stick with the theme. Okay, so this is my pizza finished. Ta-da! Derek will show his. So I'll just go and pop them in the oven. Your oven should be a quite high heat, 200 degrees centigrade. What was it, 180 Fahrenheit? 185 180. Fahrenheit. Mark, gas Mark 6. Gas Mark 6. You're putting it in for about 10-15 minutes, but you need to keep an eye on it. No, no, that's fine. Uh, they'd rather not see me. They'd rather ah, just see. So they'd rather delicious. just see the pizza. Perfect cheese as well. Thank you, Gary. That looks nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wash my hands. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will now take your questions as the pizzas cook and we show you the finished product. So I'll just wait for our chefs to come back. This point, you know, get somebody to come in and clean the kitchen for me. No, that's what I'm doing as well. So just while we're waiting, we're just going to take some questions. I think if anybody else has some, Lorna is going to let me know. Hopefully so, I can answer. A girl called Brody asks a question, Derek. She's asking, what's your favourite meal to make? My favourite meal to make is um, the traditional
traditional stew Ooh, nice. done in a slow cooker with silver side of beef um. with carrots, onions and chopped tomatoes. Oh, very, very nice, but you've got to cook it for about four or five hours mm. and then it's actually better yeah. the following day. Do you use any herbs? Yes, I use some herbs, yeah, the herbs Provence, um, but the, 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 the trick for the, be the, the beef is to cut it very thick chunks because when it cooks for five hours it, it breaks melts, down melts and it, it makes it absolutely lovely. Then just put some boiled potatoes in with it. Okay. Voila. You have a friend for Sunday dinner, make us shoot. Anytime you want. <laughs> <laughs> See you on Sunday. My favourite okay. dinner is probably either pizza or I like I like chili as well. Mm. I like the versatility of chili. There you can pair it with rice or baked potato. Maybe we can do that one week. So we've also got a question asking what your favourite pizza is. What's your favourite pizza? Well, I think Carrie, you mentioned it earlier on. My my favourite pizza is uh, pepperoni. Mm. Um, but I know some people in my family all prefer sloppy Giuseppe. Oh, uh, from but they, that's another task entirely to make your own sloppy Giuseppe because it's a uh, different way of cooking the, uh, the dough. Oh, really? Well, you have to fold it and put stuff inside and fold it over. Oh, I don't know. That. So it's not a flat kind of pizza. Yeah. Um, I actually tried a carbonara pizza recently. Ooh. It was quite interesting. It had a white base rather than the tomato sauce base. It was really nice. And I've also had a lot of people like barbecue base. So, I know so a lot. we've got a few other ones as well here. Um, asking, how long will the cooked pizza keep for? So we always recommend uh, keeping it for three days from its cooked. That's usually the same with anything that's cooked. Um, so today's Wednesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I probably wouldn't recommend eating it past that. But you can make the dough in advance. Um, the dough is freezeable. Um, just cover in a little bit of oil, put it in a sealed either container or like cling film, a sandwich bag. You can put it in the freezer. Just make sure you defrost it thoroughly before you use it and that's like I would probably say the dough is the most time consuming step of it so at least if you have the dough then you can just roll it out as your tomato mixture and whatever toppings. Oh somebody's asking, Laura's asking, you ever tried chocolate pizza? <laughs> no, wow. I can't even imagine what that would be like. It's it's pretty good to be fair. A lot of chocolate, there's chopped strawberries on there. What, like a pizza so it's base? Like a pizza base, so it's like a savoury base. Well, not like tomato or that, but like the, what, the dough. Mm -hmm. And then it's Nutella or chocolate, and then it's mm -hmm. like strawberries, and you just put it on it and that. Highly recommend. Sense. Not the healthiest thing, but. Yeah, maybe not as a nutritionist. I shouldn't recommend mm -hmm. that. But it does sound really interesting, Laura. Thank you. I'll need to have a look out for it. And on that note, how, what makes these pizzas healthier than, say, your takeaway pizzas? Well, you notice probably with my pizza and also Derek's, all the different colours. So we try and recommend eating a rainbow of colours full of vitamins, minerals, vitamin A and the peppers and the sweet corn, great for your eyes. Lots of vitamin D and mushrooms. Um, from a takeaway pizza, the calorie content um, would be a lot more as well. One thing that I would definitely say about it would be the salt content. The adults recommended salt content is 2000 milligrams for one takeaway pizza. Well, a portion of one takeaway pizza would probably be about 1900. And if you think that that's only one meal, you'd be eating three meals, so that'd be your salt content way over. Somebody's what? actually asking about the salt and why that would be bad for us. Um, much. Well, mostly our hearts, um, heart disease would be a big thing, blood pressure, um, are, it's just not that great for us. One of the other aspects of making your own pizza, um, you know the ingredients are fresh. Yeah. You, you can check the ingredients yourself. Anything that doesn't look fresh, don't use. No. Fresh ingredients. Always the best. We know exactly what's went into this pizza, where if you looked in the back of a pizza box or you, if you got a takeaway from Domino's, then I'm sure there'd be a lot of different additives and preservatives. Um, 
not that these aren't excessively bad for us, but it's just good to know what goes into your food and know where your foods came from. So we've also had a question about making your pizza gluten free. Um, I would just do exactly the same. I don't know, is baking powder gluten free? You can get some baking powders that are naturally yes. gluten free. But it's gluten free. Gluten free flour. Flour is yeah. the main ingredient. Yeah, use rice flour and uh, like lots of different things. So actually, we've had so many people talking about different types of pizzas as well. So we've got um, Emily is going to make a fruit pizza with oh, her well. brownies next week. Um, we're asking if we've had one before. I think we made some at the school before. Fruit pizza. Do you remember we had the watermelon? Oh, the watermelon pizzas. Yep. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, the typical so Hawaiian nice. pineapple pizza. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fruit. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and we've got some suggestion of a baked bean pizza. <laughs> that sounds interesting. It's, it yeah. does, doesn't it? Maybe you can try that at home, Derek, and let us know what it tastes like. I may try it. <laughs> so Derek, you've said um, to try and use fresh as much as possible, but can you could you use frozen vegetables with that? I, I wouldn't that? recommend I wouldn't recommend frozen because um, the, 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 there's so much water content in the frozen vegetables that it would actually destroy your pizza. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that you can use frozen, for example, if you're making scones, which I'm sure you'll be doing at one point, Carrie. Um, a good thing to do with scones is to use frozen raspberries in your scone mix uh, and then when you cook your scones they come out perfect. Yeah. So The only thing about frozen, I agree with Derek, is the water content but frozen vegetables um, are actually frozen pretty much as soon as they're picked so the nutrient content between frozen and fresh wouldn't be that different if that was the aspect that you were looking at it. And I know me personally would buy a lot of fresh ingredients and actually just forget about it in the bottom of the fridge and by the time I go to use it then it's a little bit soggy. So don't ever be put off by the idea of buying frozen, maybe not specifically for pizza. Soup. But yeah, so frozen perfect. vegetables for soup is phenomenal. Yeah, things like that. Um so we've also had the suggestion of breakfast pizza. Oh, what was yes. that? Until? I think I've actually Bacon seen one down sausage. in Wales, down in, uh, when Eggs. I was in Wales last year or the year before, they had in Weatherspoons, uh, we stayed in a the hotel there, and they served up a pizza in the morning that had uh, a fried egg in it, it had sausage, it had beans, and black pudding, and even a khaki scone. As unhealthy as that sounds, I think I would absolutely love that. <laughs> <laughs> one thing can I just say as well about these pizzas, is you don't need to go to the extent of making your own base. I know personally with lunch clubs we use lots of different things. We use pita, pita bread, so you just get your tomato base, put it on, put whatever toppings on. Um, you can use tortilla wraps as well, wholemeal wraps. Um, you just put it in the oven for a less length of time and kids really, really love them whenever we do them like that. You can also buy pizza bases in packs that are already made. Um, they're not as good as doing it homemade yourself, but it saves time. Um, so we also have quite a few shout outs, we seem to have people from all over the, the country here, so we've got Vicky and Matthew up in Aberdeen, we've got Jack and Antrim in Ireland, oh, nice. Hello. Hi, Jack. we've got our mini chef, do you remember her from Family Cookie, we've got little Sienna who said hello, hi Sienna, um, we've got Jacqueline and Vicky commenting on your beautiful penny, Thank you. Um, this this penny was handmade by Lorna Laney, oh. who is sitting behind the camera because she's a bit camera shy. But I'm glad everyone appreciates it. I think Lorna did a great job. Um, we we've got people commenting on how good your pita pizza ideas are. Um, myself and our early years nutritionists have actually shared a recipe of pita pizzas on our Facebook this week. It's a great lockdown lunch for any kids who being homeschooled they're really quick and easy to make you can take an hour out of your day not even an hour to get away from school work make these pita pizzas and they're really tasty so if you want to check out the recipe it's on our facebook we've got lachlan who's saying hello as well here we've got carrie uh carrie saying ruth saying that hard boys i love enjoying them oh good good 
I think getting the kids involved has been huge because everybody's saying that their kids are absolutely loving um, joining in with this. Is it part of their school learning? Could it be part of their school the, learning? The thing learning? about cooking, people just think, or oh, people do it or they don't, but it is a lifelong skill. Yeah. If you learn to cook at a younger age, then you'll take it on into your adult life. And it's not just about chopping vegetables, it's about numeracy as well. So if you're using the scales, maybe 200 grams of flour, they need to calculate, or 150 milliliters of water. A knife, using a knife is really good for your motor skills as well. And it just increases their confidence. Uh, it's a really great skill and being part of the nutrition project in our schools before COVID, I know children really love cooking and they love creating a dish and then tasting it afterwards. That's definitely the best step for them. Would you say that cooking from home helps with fussy eating and things like that, particularly when kids are really small? Do you find that? Yeah, it's really good for just trying new things if they're interested in it, maybe seeing the shape of the pepper, chopping the pepper and then tasting it while they're chopping it would encourage them to try new things. And I think making it themselves definitely encourages fussy eating. And also, if you didn't get a recipe pack, taking them to the shop and having that shopping experience of picking things off, off the shelves, putting it in their basket, putting it onto the checkout, putting it into the bag. That really helps with the experience of eating. Also, well. they can do a lot of research themselves online and see what they want to make and what ingredients they do need and go with mummy or daddy or whoever to go and buy the stuff. Yeah. In my days, it was called uh, home economics, I think. Yeah. Is it still called home economics? They do home economics in school, but I don't think it's a core subject now, is it? Uh, you can do subjects like hospitality and stuff where you still cook. Oh, right, I just okay. kind of like get them. I don't know what that is. You do it in first and second year. First, first and third. Another thing I want to say about these pizzas, if you did pick up a recipe box from us, so everything that I used here was within that recipe box. So that recipe box cost that us, we budgeted it at £3.70. And if you think if you went to a takeaway place, um, and bought a pizza of that size, it would probably cost you a bit more. So it is, although it requires a bit more time, maybe a bit more effort, I know you can be a bit tired if you're coming in for work, but just shows the difference in the price at the end of the week. If you're spending £15 a month, it'll add up at the end of the year. And you yeah. can also use it to make your pasta sauces and things like yes, that. Yeah, so it's yes, almost yes. two dishes a month. Yeah. So it's also a good recipe for children to do as well. Yeah, definitely. I'm just going to go and check our pizzas because I realise we've been a bit distracted. So, so Derek, have you enjoyed your cooking session? Absolutely, you? it's my first time actually making a, a, a pizza base um, and I enjoy getting my hands all gooey. Um, as I say, some people perhaps may not enjoy that part of it, but you can use other things as Carrie was saying, like pita bread, you can go to your local supermarket and you can buy pizza bases. Um, and then you can just put all the ingredients you want on your pizza base and fire away and on you go. We've had a fantastic comment from Jacqueline saying that she, she's got lots of new families coming from Wallaford who are joining in and they received Good. their kit today as well. So we're hoping to, to get this rolled out so that we can more drop off points for, for recipe packs and things like that. Yeah. And here comes Carrie with the finished product. So this is our pizza. Derek's isn't ready just yet. Mine's is thicker. Derek's is thicker, so it takes a little bit longer. If your pizza is a bit thinner, then it won't take as long. Uh, just keep checking on it. Sometimes in the oven, um, you might notice the back of it's cooked, so just twist it around and put it back in. Um, but I hope everybody really enjoyed our Facebook Live. Sorry if you had any technical issues with the rotation, but we'll try and fix it for next week. If people can also take photos of their pizzas um, and send it in, we might do a little competition. Um, tune in next week. We're doing carbonara next week. It's a really great recipe and it's really, really easy. So hopefully see you there. Thank you, everybody. Bye.